If your Outlook inbox is out of control, then these are five powerful tips to help you finally tame it. Hi, I'm Amy. Let's nerd out. A quick note before we get started is that I will be demonstrating on the Outlook for the web. And number one is eliminating unnecessary emails in the first place. This means unsubscribing to any newsletters that no longer serve you. Or if you right click on an email, then there's also some additional options here. You can report an email as junk or phishing or even block a sender. Once you have eliminated emails coming in in the first place, the number two is to adopt a sorting process. And in my previous role, we received on average 300 emails a day. And I use this exact same sorting process to achieve inbox zero. So I'm confident that you can also do the same. So when you receive an email in your inbox, there are four potential options that you can take. And we're going to look at each of these individually and break them down into clear, actionable steps. The first option is that you can complete the task right away. And this is great for some of those low effort items that you can complete within a couple of minutes. Once you're finished with the email, you can then either delete it if you don't need it anymore, or you can archive it if you want to retain that email for either financial or legal or some other reason in the future. And I also just wanted to note here that if you hover over these two keys on the ribbon, then you can see the shortcut key as well. So for deleting a message, you can simply press the delete key. Or if you want to archive a message, you can simply press the letter E on your keyboard and that is going to archive that message. Number two is that we can create a task from an email. And this is great if you aren't able to complete the task right away and you want to keep track of it for later. So on the top right here on the menu bar, we see my day. So if you click on that, then you'll see to do and tasks. We can simply select this email and then drag and drop it over. And you just want to make sure that you're adding this as a task and not as an event. When we go add as a task, then that is going to create a task from this email that then syncs with Microsoft Planner and to do. So if we access to do on the left navigation, then under tasks, you will see that task here. And if we select on that little information icon, then we can even be redirected to the email so that we can easily access it later. And if you want to learn more about task management within Microsoft 365, then I will include a link to another tutorial in the description. Alternatively, you may want to delegate an email and pass on the task to another team member, in which case you can forward that email. So we'll just send this to Mike and then we'll just ask him to take care of the task. Once you've sent the email, then I also just recommend hovering over it and then flagging this email for follow up. When we flag an email, it creates a task in Microsoft Planner as well as to do. So this is a great way to differentiate tasks that you have delegated, but you have flagged them for follow up versus a task that you have created from an email for yourself to complete. But it's important to note here that when we flag an email for follow up, if you delete that email, then that task is also going to be marked as complete within Microsoft Planner or to do. So what I recommend doing here is creating a quick step that can automatically move emails from your inbox to a dedicated folder and then flag them for follow up. And we will take a closer look at this setup in the automation section in just a moment. The final sorting option is that if you just need to clear an email out of your inbox to deal with it later, you can simply select the email and move it to a subfolder. I call mine clear inbox. I've seen other people call it to deal with later, but you get the idea. And this just ensures that your inbox is clear from clutter. And I typically use this if I have a bunch of emails in my inbox and I'm not too sure what I want to do with those emails yet. Or if I'm checking my emails from my mobile phone, then I can just move them out of that inbox once I have read them so that when I check my inbox again, I can see that I have a clean inbox. And this is really important because when we reread emails, then we can get distracted. And when we're distracted, it can take us about 20 minutes to get back on track and focus. 
So by moving them to a new folder, then you're clearing out that clutter so that your next 20 minutes can be focused. And this leads us to number three, which is time blocking. Time blocking means setting aside a dedicated time in your calendar by creating a new event. We can call it emails. And then we just want to set a recurring option So we can go daily and then just select the days of the week that you work and save as well as define your time frames. For me, I like to categorize these so that they pop out in my calendar. And then it will also just ensure that your calendar is marked as busy so that your team members will know that you're busy and that you won't have meeting requests during these time frames. So here you have a dedicated time now throughout your days to open up your emails and work through your inbox. And when you're not working through your inbox, then we want to close Outlook to minimize distractions. The other part of time blocking is that you might want to schedule time in your calendar to work through some of those email tasks. In which case you can go up to the my day, select that task and then drag it onto your calendar. If it's going to take you more than that 30 minute block, you can also just hover over the task and adjust the time blocking. Number four is automation. And this comes in so many different shapes and sizes from categorizing emails that you are CC'd on to moving important newsletters to a dedicated folder or even setting up templates for common emails. But in this video, let's walk through setting up the quick step that will automatically flag those delegated emails and move them to that dedicated folder. To add a quick step, on the home tab of the ribbon, we will go quick steps, select the drop down, and then manage quick steps. We'll go add quick step, give it a name. And then in number two, we are going to define an action and we are going to define multiple actions here. And the order that you put these in are crucial because they may not run correctly if they aren't put in this order. So we'll select the drop down here and then we will go flag. And when we define flag, an additional drop down menu appears where we can define a due date for that flag, which will mean that you will be notified on that date to prompt you to follow up on that item. So you might want to do tomorrow or next week, or if you don't want to receive those notifications, then you can even just go no date. We'll select your option here, and then we are going to add another action. So this time, what I like to do is I like to mark these emails as red. And then that way, when they move over to these folders, you don't see the number of emails in there. Um, but that's just a personal preference. So you may not want to do this and you might just want to mark them as unread. And then that would indicate how many emails you have in that dedicated folder. Now, the final item is to move the email to that folder. So we'll choose an action. We will go move to. And then here we can select our folder. In my case, I've already got this folder called flagged emails, which is a subfolder of inbox. And if you don't have it a folder yet, then you can always go create new folder. So I'm going to select flagged emails. And then at the bottom here, we have an optional, and this is where you could define a shortcut key for your quick step. So I'm going to leave this off, but if you wanted to add a shortcut key, you could. But once that's all set, then we can go save, close out of here. And then here under the quick steps, we'll see that quick step that we just created. So if we select that, then we're going to notice that it has now been flagged and it's moved to that folder and it's also been marked as red. If you want to learn 10 ways to automate your inbox, then I will include a link to another tutorial in the description. Number five is refining our communication habits. My coaching clients ask me all the time, how can they reduce their dependencies on emails? And one way that we can do that within Outlook is to select an email and you can share it to Teams and then you can move that conversation into a Teams channel, which is a dedicated space for your team to collaborate. Alternatively, you can start to adopt other collaboration tools within the Microsoft ecosystem. For example, Microsoft Loop is specifically designed for collaboration. And if you want to learn seven ways that you can start using Microsoft Loop in your organization, then you can check out this video here.